I'm just conscious of the minister's statement there that exceptional students and disadvantaged students will not be dis will not be at fault. Whereas actually students who perform normally in fee paying skills or other skills will be granted. But it's only the exceptional skilled students and disadvantaged skills who won't be put out. That seems like an inherent disadvantage to me. Um, Minister, one of the things you do learn when you grow up in a working class house is that somehow poverty is your fault. That no matter how hard you work, and you work hard, you work hard in school, you work hard raising, helping with your siblings, supporting family members who might be Ill, Ill, you work hard, you have to go off and get a second job while you're 16 so you can support the family income. And that no matter how hard you work, it won't be enough to shake off the limitations forced on you because of the, your family's wealth or lack thereof. I'm someone who grew up in the inner city which you referenced. I'm somebody who's had the opportunity to go to university through an access programme and I've also been very privileged to work in education for many years now. And I know full well that points are not a measurement of hard work, of ability or of potential. I know that in desh skills, not just the one you re referenced, but in desh skills all over this country, that a student getting 300 points is just as admirable as a student in another skill who manages to get 600, taking circumstances into account. I know that in desh skills and in inner city skills, that students who are smart, that kids from the north inner city, for example, are as clever as students from any of their privately educated students who make up the vast majority of places in their third level skills. The Leaving Cert is a game that many students cannot win. If you are a low income student or a student with a disability or a student from a migrant background, the, ch the, the chances are stacked against you. There are access routes in universities. There are college based initiatives that are dedicated and that are available only to a small, exceptional few who will become myths to the success of the many others who will fail. And what we've done this week is we've written that into black and white. The decision last week to award predictive grades or calculated grades, and I'm not sure what's the difference between prediction or calculation. I don't know any calculation that's ever been made without an inherent prediction behind it. Uh, for, on the past, are based on past performances of a school, and it's been met with outrage amongst many of equality activists. It's also been met with some degree of relief from, from students, from equality activists, who are just looking for clarity in relation to the decision. The perception of the Leaving Cert as a great meritocracy persists, however, and every year that's enforced through feeder skills and the highlights that mass, the feeder skills which present who gets the opportunity to go to which colleges and from what skills, and that highlights the massive disadvantages that are inherent in our Leaving Cert. There is one thing, Minister, you can do to increase your chances of going to university in this country. It's not to work hard, it's not to study, it's not to apply yourself, it's to go to a private school. And regardless of how hard you study, it's not going to make that vital difference for you if you're from a certain background. School progression rates in the same postcode can vary dramatically. Take, the, you know, take Dublin 1, for example, where we have both a private school and we have a number of desh skills. In the private school, 117% of students get to go on to third level each year. Whereas in the desh skills, one which you reference, and there's others that exist also, only 34% of those students get to go on. That's not a reflection of the student. Talking about that honestly, bringing clarity to the existence of that exists, is not disadvantage, it's not an insult to those students. It's just highlighting the fact that there is an ingrained disadvantage in there. And if we don't talk about it, that's actually an insult to those students. The Leaving Street debacle has failed so many students this year. Widely acknowledged as one of the most worrying times in a young adult's life, the delays in making decisions, and indeed the ultimate decision once made, has contributed further to an already anxious time. However, what must not be lost is, is how this decision this year has merely ensured an embedded economic inequality remains embedded. Our education system has failed students for decades gone by. Every year, students doing the Leaving Cert are failed because of an illness. They're failed because of experience and grief, because of the pressure. This year, it's simply failing everybody. And this will continue to do so unless we systematically dismantle the, in in the inequalities enshrined within. Like everywhere else, 
Diversity in our third level institutions is crucial. <coughs> we need more working class third level students, more traveller students, more students from Roma backgrounds, more ethnic students, more students with disabilities. And as things stand, the reality is that the state has totally abdicated its responsibility for ensuring equal access to universities and that universities themselves have attempted to diversify their entrance through schemes such as college access programmes. These access students are, of course, success stories. Study after study shows that when you remove the, when you remove the barriers, the playing field is more equal. Their grades in college are remarkably similar to students who have entered through more traditional entry routes. These programmes are vital to diversifying our third level institutions and ensuring greater progression rates in marginalised communities. Yet what isn't as acceptable is that the diversification of third levels falls to universities and colleges alone. It is not acceptable that in some universities only 10% or less of places are reserved from those from marginalised backgrounds that our state has failed. It is not acceptable that these access programmes which have performed an essential function in diversifying our universities are reliant upon fundraising and donations from private individuals. The state is utterly failing students from disadvantaged areas and skills in areas of economic deprivation while simultaneously cruelly maintaining that this is a system-based merit or rather the exceptional student will progress. And let us not forget either that there is a industry that has been built up to profit off this unequal system. Growing skills, private tuition, fee-paying skills, transforms education every year into an arms race. The more money your parents have, the more likely you are to go to university. The more you invest in your son, the greater opportunity they have in comparison to somebody else's in a disadvantaged community. More than half of the top 20 skills send the highest more than half of the top 20 skills send the highest proportion of students to third level or fee paying skills according to the feeder list of 2019. The outrage that a student's grade will be decided as much on past performance of their skill as on their own ability is an outrage that we must keep with us. It is one that we must grow and build upon. We have failed decades of students already to this system of educational apartheid. In the third third doll, we need to be able to say no more. Our education system is crying out for reform with mass support from educators, parents and critically from students themselves. It must be your priority. The state must step up and ensure that postcode is no longer the most reliable predictor of third level access. The Leaving Cert, subject, the Leaving Cert subjects all students to sit to unnecessary stress and pressure and perhaps most dangerously teaches the winners and losers of this system that as their individual outcomes are due to their hard work or lack thereof rather than a myriad of complex inequalities exasperated by a system running since 1925 without much innovation or change. The system thrives on the fact that each year a couple of students, the exceptional student, will break through the barriers we have constructed and we use these kids, these exceptional kids, to lie to ourselves and to say that the system works, that if only all other kids were like these exceptional couple of kids, that they too would be able to pro progress. It allows us to pretend that the system isn't broken, but somehow the kids who aren't exceptional are. Think what that does to the student who succeeds in what is reality a lottery, and what it does to the students who come close, but always feel that they themselves, they let themselves and their families down. Think what it does to the couple of students every year who understand this in their bones, the 11 and 12 year olds who know that's an unfair system, but they know that there's no point in trying really because while they, good, while they are good, they may not be what we consider to be acceptable. Minister, I've just got one question for you. I think that we have an opportunity this year to be more collective in terms of our response. The Leaving Cert is constructed in such a way that when you unravel one string, the whole thing falls together. I think we need a cross-party committee to decide on not only the next stages of education in terms of what it looks like in September, in October, in November. You've referenced several times the experts who are leading this process. Why can't these stakeholders be in that room? Why can't we have a committee that looks at how education looks for fifth years going into six years, for sixth class going into fourth year in September, and let us all be involved in that process, because we all have to carry the news. Thank you.